Fortune magazine named my next guest to the list of the world's greatest leaders. Her book, Unmasking AI, explores how artificial intelligence can be harmful and how we can prevent those harms. Welcome to New Day, Dr. Joy Bolimweeny. Thank you so much for having me. Oh. I'm excited to be in Seattle, first timer. So first all time. Good. This is, if only the weather was cooperating, but that's okay. Well, we I'm have you here. I'm from Boston, so this seems pretty nice to me. It's all <laughs> about your baseline. <laughs> Okay, I feel like for some people, artificial intelligence can be a lot to even wrap your brain yes. around from the beginning. So I feel like we should start there for people. What is AI? Yeah, I've been asking the same <laughs> question. I think about AI as the quest really to give machines what we would think of as intelligent ability. So you can think about communication, right? So natural language processing or production, you can think about perception, looking at the world, the work I do, computer vision. So how might a car hopefully detect a pedestrian and yes. not run over them, right? And you can also think about what we've been seeing with generative AI, with intelligence being about creativity in some way, right? So maybe you are hopefully not replacing the authors, but creating a book or yes. creating music or creating a film. And so it's this ongoing quest doesn't mean we fought and we figured it out just yet. And so that's kind of where my work comes in. That is so amazing. And with that work, how do you feel how AI is, you know, being implemented places that people cannot consent to? Mm, that's such a great question. And I actually think about it in both digital spaces and physical spaces. So in the digital uh, space, we've already seen the deep fakes, right, where your face is taken and maybe put in an explicit scene. We've seen also where your voice can be taken, as we saw with uh, President Biden. So there's no consent when we put our images or our audio online and some company takes it, yeah. right, and then uh, generates these sorts of synthetic media outputs. Another area I think about it is within our physical spaces. So going to an airport, maybe you've seen facial recognition there and you're supposed to have an opt-out option. Oh. Many people don't even know. The signage might be there, but hard to see if it's there at all. And there's also this notion of coercive consent. So you just paid how much for your plane ticket? How many people are behind <laughs> you in line? Are you really going to be that person, right, to say no? Oftentimes I am. I opt out. I try to let everybody else know. You can opt out. I'm a You're US the person citizen. in line. You're yeah. like, listen. Right, you know, but um, that right to refusal oftentimes people don't know. And so even if it's supposed to be a situation where consent should be given, absent that knowledge, people are moving and traveling in ignorance. So those are just a few areas. And facial recognition can get it wrong too, right? There's some... Oh yeah, uh... <laughs> it, it, it can get it wrong, you know? And so it can get it wrong in, the t in terms of misidentifications. We've already had so many reports of people being uh, falsely rest arrested. Oh people gosh. like Robert Williams arrested in front of his two young daughters uh, and his wife. And it can also get it right by not getting your face. So if you've ever failed to log into your iPhone or something like yeah, that. No one's there. Yeah. Right, you know, or you, that same kind of technology that's face matching, it's sometimes used by government services. So now think of veterans trying to access uh, benefits or even people trying uh -huh. to uh, access their tax documents with the IRS. So when they adopt companies that are doing face matching, it actually means false negatives, not being recognized as who you are, can prevent you from having access to government uh, services. So it can fail in many ways. Many ways and so important. All of those points are just incredible. And Portia too, you talked about, you know, your first example, but Portia Woodruff as well. She, can you speak on that and how it failed her as well? Yeah. So in 2023, not so long ago, Portia Woodruff was actually arrested while eight months pregnant and it was due to a false face recognition match from the same police department that had arrested Robert Williams. So we're talking about years later. So oftentimes you hear, oh, these technologies are getting better, except that's all like this just happened, <laughs> you know? Seriously. And she reported having contractions, you know, while she was being held and she had to be rushed to the emergency room after. So this misidentification actually put two lives in danger, and we already know that maternal uh, mortality rates for women of color uh, are especially egregious. So this just adds to even more problems. 
Wow, unreal. And I'm curious your thoughts on King County's here, their facial recognition ban, and if you think that it's gone far enough. So I was looking at it this morning, actually, and I commend them for having something in place because we still don't even have federal laws right around this type of technology. So I do think it's a step in the right direction. What I always look at are the exceptions. I'm like, okay, first part sounds good. Mm -hmm. Let's read the fine print. Okay. So one of the exceptions I saw is that the police departments, as I understand it, can still accept facial recognition as part of evidence if they themselves didn't uh, produce it or request it be produced. And so this seems like it's leaving a gaping loophole to encourage vigilante uses of facial recognition, doorbells sending police uh, departments information. So I do think it can go further by closing in on some of those exceptions. And is that what you want the federal government to do? I mean, I guess, how can they up their AI you know, in law enforcement? I think the first thing is actually checking the technology. So we're talking about basics. My research was looking at AI systems from very large tech companies you think have their act together. And we found racial bias, gender bias, and all of these things. And so before any police department adopts the new shiny gadget, does it work? Is it promoting discrimination? Is it actually reducing something that would be uh, harmful? For example, shot spotter, the idea, right, sounds good, let's reduce crime. The reality you actually had, uh, for example, in Chicago, a 13-year-old, Alex Toledo, was shot and killed, right? And this oh was gosh. in response to police coming to a shot spotter alert. And so that's why it's so important that you don't just get excited about what the technology could do, the promise of the technology, but you really look at the reality and you ask, is this allowing us to reach our end goal? And oftentimes it's not. So that's where you have to start and the burden has to be on police departments to show that the technologies are not going to be harmful uh, to communities. Wow, Dr. Joy, thank you for the work that you do. Your book is a must read yes. for everyone. Thank you and enjoy Seattle.